Welcome back to the Omics Logic Bioinformatics for Precision Medicine program. In this video, we will be reviewing what we have learned in session one. The first session was designed to give you a good sense of bioinformatic applications in precision medicine. After completing the session video and associated resources, you will have a good grasp on how data analysis skills and next generation sequencing technologies are used today in the field. By now, you will have also learned about the various examples that highlight the role of precision medicine in diverse range of fields from oncology, neuroscience to even infectious diseases. To briefly review what we have learned in session one, first, we took a look at various data sources that are used to understand clinical decisions. These consist of basic patient details, their clinical history, and finally, the molecular profiling data. We discussed about what is clinical data, what is molecular data, and where do they come from. But what was interesting to learn was the growing importance of molecular data and how their association with clinical data can help refine strategies for diagnostics and therapy selection. Their importance can be seen as we discussed in the case of Herceptin, a targeted therapeutic that has been used to treat HER2 positive breast cancer patient that led to an increase in the rate of breast cancer survival. Other multiomic studies has also helped change the way we understand cancers. For example, we discussed about how integrated analysis of multiomics data has led to a much better understanding of liver cancer risk, such as infection with hepatitis B and C, as well as other factors like alcohol consumption, ethnicity, and other comorbidities. Such comprehensive studies continue to yield results even today that improve the way treatment is delivered and even find new treatments. Next, we explore the role of next generation sequencing or what is also known as high throughput sequencing in transforming the field of medicine. Omics technologies like NGS can be used to explore the role, relationships and actions of the various types of molecules. Many types of omics data can be generated using NGS and these omics data describe in great detail the intracellular and intercellular processes associated with common diseases. These data set can be analyzed to understand the biology behind host factors, microbiome composition in our bodies, the type of environments that we live in that drive infection, and various factors that lead to clinical manifestation of diseases. Finally, we learned about the process of how discovering the lab leads to real life applications. Here, mainly we explore three topics, cell line experiments, animal models of human diseases, and how they offer a rich collection of data to inform diagnosis and treatment of cancer in patients. We also discussed some of the main projects carried out, for example, the Cancer Genome Atlas that aims to explore the entire spectrum of genomic changes involved in human cancer. Another project discussed was the All of Us Research Program that is building one of the largest biomedical data resources of its kind. Finally, we discussed about the Human Microbiome Project that aims to characterize the human microbiome in normal individuals to determine if changes in the microbiome can be correlated with disease and health. After reviewing the rationale for bioinformatics and NGS in biomedical research and the clinic, we reviewed some case studies. For example, we discussed the spread of West African Ebola virus, SARS-CoV-2 genomes and cell responses, as well as how the microbiome is associated with disease and drug response. We also reviewed some example projects designed to illustrate how bioinformatics is used in real-world examples from inherited mutations in sickle cell anemia to mycobacterium tuberculosis. Finally, to benefit from today's lecture, we discuss some of the associated resources that you can go through to refresh your memory, learn more or practice what we have learned in today's session. A good place to start with is Lesson 2, Bioinformatics in Healthcare from Course 1, Introduction to Bioinformatics. Here, you will also see examples and videos of medical professionals discussing bioinformatics in precision medicine applications. After gaining an overview of examples from healthcare where bioinformatics can be applied, you can start with course two bites and molecules. This course is for anyone who wants to review the basic terminology and get a good overview of topics we cover in this course. Materials we cover today can be found in lesson six, Introduction to Genomics of Bites and Molecules that will cover fundamental concepts in NGS and various genomic project examples. Another great course is Course 3, Genomics. This course serves as an introduction to the bioinformatics subdiscipline of genomics. In this course, lesson two, Working with DNA Sequences in R, will get you started on learning about DNA and turn to sequence alignment to find mutations that can help treat patients better, all done by coding in R. 
Then you will also learn from lesson three, Introduction to Genomics, that will help you familiarize with the biology of genetics and genetic variation. The full course contains a lot more information that you can choose to explore independently. Some of these will be covered in the future lectures as well, so do not worry about completing them for now. Finally, we took a brief glance at what we will be covering in the upcoming session, that is session two, Genomic Data Analysis. Here, you will go one step further to better understand what is genomic data, how do you perform gradient coding analysis, what is the difference between germline and somatic mutation, what is its clinical rele relevance. At the end of session two, you will have a thorough understanding of genomics data, gradient coding analysis, as well as specific techniques for clinical annotation in cancer.